boring. You've got a market that's going sideways and it's going nowhere fast. What are you supposed to do, right? Well, here are three steps while you wait for that market to turn around. Now, before we dive into the charts, important reminder that trading investing can be extremely risky business. Therefore, it's your responsibility to evaluate any information, opinion, advice, or other content contained in this video. So I've got three steps for you on how to analyze a sideways market. And we'll talk more about what sideways is in a moment with a chart example here. That's going nowhere fast, right? It's just kind of churning, meandering. It's not really giving you clear directions. Here's what you do. First thing to do is to identify whether it's a price correction or a time correction. We often forget that there are two axes on our chart, right? We all focus on that vertical one, the price, but what about time on the bottom? Let me show you what I mean here. So here we've got a chart of the front month of the E-mini S&P 500 futures. Okay, this is the most liquid futures market on the planet. And this is a proxy for the S&P 500, which is the broad market, right? The economic indicator of the US. So when it's going sideways and you don't have a clear direction, right now you can see we have this high, a low, but it's higher than this one back here, a lower high, a slightly lower low, but now we're going to have a lower high. It's going to continue higher. It's a little tough to figure out where it's going to go, right? So this is after meeting a forecast. So that's the date that was identified here on June 28th. And I teach how to forecast in my loss forecasting trading system. And since then, we now that got the sideways range, what do we do? So this is a time correction. And how do I know that? Because it's taking up more time. It's taking more of the horizontal axis than it is of the vertical axis. If it was a price correction, we might see a dramatic move in one way or the other. And those can fall into shapes like flags, wedges, and more. Okay. So price correction versus time correction gives you sort of a bearing and says, all right, the market's in this relatively narrow range and it's just eating up time. Now in my skinny outlook, so every quarter I go through 20 of the hottest markets and I put out research in the outlook annual, I have a deep long-term analysis on the SPY. And there's actually a key timing point for forecast coming up very soon, which I'm going to go over with members in that review session here. Let's just focus on this sideways range and come back to the charts. The next step is to identify boundaries for breakouts. Boundaries for breakouts. Well, as you maybe have noticed, I have some pretty curly hair, all right? And when I was growing up in the 80s and 90s, it was a lot bigger, okay? And when it was just getting out of control, what we do, we put a scrunchie, right? We took a little fabric uh, wrapped around elastic and use it to bind it and control it. Same idea here, okay? Put a scrunchie on the price action. Let me show you how you do that. So you identify the keys, highs, and lows, which we already just walked through, knowing that these are sort of defining the range. And then you just start to eyeball guys. It's a little bit of a freestyle at first until you find the scrunchie that is actually capturing the action and binding it efficiently. So one of the scrunchies that I see on this market is right here. I'm just making it red because that's where I happen to have it on my skin and mini charts as a red line. And can you see how beautifully, okay, notice this connected the June 27th high to the July 8th high. Can you see how beautifully this Ju July 18th high came up and backed off? You could have been ready for that if you knew what scrunchie to lay out the moment this price high formed, when you started to realize, oh, the market's not just sailing up, it's kind of just hanging out sideways. Making sense? Okay, great. So now let's see if we can find a lower scrunchie. We may or may not. So let's just come in and connect some lines here. All right. Well, here we had one and this ended up being a little bit of a, a false break lower. We got this doji candle. Okay. Dojis are one of my favorite candlesticks and I explore all kinds of candlesticks in my GAN candlesticks program. But here you can see it didn't close below that lower line. So that scrunchie, if you will, was pretty useful. Now, Notice I skipped ahead from June 30th to July 5th to draw this line. What if I just connected the June 30th low to the July 1st low? Oh, interesting, right? Different kind of scrunchie. It was tested on July 5th, tested again on July 13th and 14th, but held on a closed basis. So you can find the trend lines, find the dynamic levels of support and resistance, because really that's all a trend line is that help you identify the next piece in our three steps. Okay. And that is 
your levels for taking action. You want to know your levels for taking action. So what exactly does this mean? Well, I'm going to come in and I'm going to adjust this line back. That other scrunchie kind of made more sense to me. All right. So now if we really zoom in here, now I'm going to look at these lines and I'm going to look at the price action and determine the key levels. So if the price trades higher from here, okay, obviously we need to get above yesterday's high, but the defining level, the defining level that it needs to clear is the anchor from the upper scrunchie, if you will, the upper trend line. And that's this July 8th high. So do you see that? How price might meander, might churn around the red trend line, but we need to see a closing breakup of 3922 to really get excited about the market again? Making sense? Okay, awesome. Now on the flip side, this is where it gets a little hairier because we already had the violation of this low back here and the formation of this low. So if we come in and draw another trend line, another scrunchie, we know that we could see price action come and push down to this lower black trend line and then still bounce up again, right? This sideways action could take on a new form. So it's not as simple as on the downside, breaking below the most recent low. So what I'm looking at specifically is this June 17th range and the high of that range. Notice we didn't touch it on June 30th. We didn't touch it on June 14th. So now there might be an area that if we can push back below that level, then we're coming back to the contract lows and more. So I brought my black trend line back and now with applying the nuances of trend lines, and I guess you could call it Gand trend lines. And, and that's something I'd love to teach you all one day. I now know how to interpret these three different trend lines, the red, the olive green, and the black, because I understand their nuances, but you can use these and draw trend lines and just get these three steps again that I'll bring back here in the flow. Anytime you see a sideways market. Okay. It's not a time where you have to just cross your arms and say boo and be bored and then just look away from the market. And then next thing you know, it's rip roaring and you miss a trade. Has that ever happened to you? Yeah, I bet it has. Now, instead you can put alerts on the trend lines. You can put alerts on the price levels and you can say, okay, market, you want to go sideways. You want to just hang out fine. I'm going to be ready for when there's action, not to mention the opportunities you have to trade inside that price action, right? We were on a daily chart. What if we went to an intraday chart? So if I just change this to say a 60 minute, there's all kinds of tradable moves here that you can absolutely take advantage of. And specifically for the ES market, I detail these multiple times a week, almost every trading day, because I'm doing it for my own trading before I share it with you. And that's in my skinny on the markets, the skinny and the mini I've been writing and sharing for over 20 years. And that is my favorite tool for digging in to the broad market. So coming back to our daily chart, I hope you can see how these three steps can really help you and you can apply them to any market at any time frame. We just use the skinny here and went for a little skinny dip, if you will. So I invite you to subscribe, like comment down below. Let me know how this video helped you. What more you'd like to see and follow and I'll catch you on the inside. Sign up at the link to join my tribe and get my hot, timely action bill updates as soon as I publish right to your inbox.